Hi everyone, and welcome back. In this example video, I'd like to use Newton's method to solve the problem from our overview video. In particular, I want to approximate the solution to x to the 5 equals 1 minus x, correct to 6 decimal places. So to start this problem, we should recall the statement of Newton's method. Remember that this technique allows us to find the roots of an equation f of x is equal to 0. That's not what we have here, so we have to write it in that form. We'll move everything over to the left just as we did in the overview, and we'll define f of x to be the function x to the 5 plus x minus 1. We want to approximate the solution to f of x is equal to 0. To do this, Newton's method says that we need an initial guess that's hopefully close to the root. I'll remind you how this was done in the overview video. From the overview, we noted that f of 0 was minus 1, while f of 1 was plus 1. So by the intermediate value theorem, there must be a root somewhere between 0 and 1. If we wanted to hone in on that root a little bit more closely, we could use the bisection method here. But I think using a guess in the interval 0, 1 will likely be fine. So just like in the overview, I'm going to set my initial guess x0 equal to 1. Now of course, x0 equals 1 is not the root of f of x, but it will be a good start for our approximation process. So on the next slide, I will use this initial guess, together with Newton's method, to hone in on our root. Okay, we have our function f of x, our initial guess, x0 equals 1, and now we're ready to make our approximations. Newton's method says that for every n greater than or equal to 0, we should set our next term, xn plus 1, equal to xn minus fxn over f prime xn. Ah, okay, so we're going to need a derivative here. Let's go ahead and calculate that. My function f of x has derivative f prime of x equal 5x to the 4 plus 1. With this in hand, we now have everything we need to compute our approximations. We'll start by computing x1. According to our formula, x1 is equal to x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. That's going to be 1 minus f of 1 over f prime of 1. Now I'm not going to work through all the calculations because it really is just a matter of plugging things in at this point, but for our first term you should get 0 0.83 repeating. Now here you are more than welcome to use a calculator. We compute our second term x2 as x1 minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. That should give us a value of approximately 0.764382. And now you continue. You have to keep going until these numbers start to stabilize. Using the exact same process, we find that x3 is approximately 0.755024. Okay, we still have some changing between x2 and x3, so we should keep going. x4 is approximately equal to 0.754. 877. Ooh, check it out. The first two decimal places are the same, which means we have two correct so far. We have to keep going though. We want six correct, right? X5, if we use the same formula, we get 0.754877. And what do you know? X4 and X5 now agree in all six decimal places. So we can be pretty confident that this will be a good approximation for our root. We conclude that the root is approximately equal to 0 0.754877. Surprise, we got a bonus second example in this video. For our second problem, I want to use Newton's method with the function fx equals x squared minus 5 to approximate the square root of 5 correct to three decimal places. Okay, well notice that Newton's method is going to approximate the roots of this function, right? And the roots of f of x, the roots of this function f of x equals 0, are plus or minus root 5. So this checks out. Newton's method really will be approximating root 5 or its negative. What should we use for an initial guess? Well, root 5 is probably pretty close to root 4, right? It's probably pretty close to 2. So why don't we use that as our initial guess? Our initial guess, our initial guess 
is x naught equals 2. From this starting point, we can get a better approximation for our root using our formula from Newton's method. The formula says that xn plus 1 is xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. So once again, we'll need the derivative of our function. The function here is pretty simple. f of x equals x squared minus 5. So the derivative, f prime of x, is simply 2x. Well, at this point, it's just a matter of plugging the numbers in. We continue to generate terms until they stabilize to three decimal places. My first term, after the initial guess, is x1. x1 is going to be x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. I'll let you check that you should get 2.25 for the first term. The second term, similarly, is x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. This one's a little uglier, but it's approximately 2.23611. Okay, we gotta keep going. Our x3 term is going to be x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2, which gives a value approximately equal to 2.23611. Oh, well, check this out. From x2 to x3, our first three decimal places, 2, 3, 6, have stabilized. So we can be reasonably confident that root 5, this root that we're approximating, is roughly 2.236. Now this is the solution to our problem. But just as a little side note, I've truncated the value of x3 here. If you expand this up to nine decimal places, you'll see it agrees in all of those decimal places with the true value of root 5, which is pretty incredible. Newton's method has converged to nine correct decimal places in just three steps.